If you just type in Ulm generator, you get this usage message and you see there are two use cases. In both of them, you need this ISA file first. Now you see my current directory is empty. So I first have to get one and for that I can use the second uh, use case where I can fetch one. And here the ISA file is actually optional. So if you simply type in Ulm generator with the option dash dash fetch, then you get a list of available ISA files that you can fetch. And currently there are not much choices. So I go with that. And now I have this ISA file in my current directory. And now I can use the first option, the first use case I can generate from that a virtual machine. Now this will take some time because it's compiling basically the whole virtual machine. We can stop with control C and if you want to speed up things, you can do this in parallel using multiple processes with the option dash J eight, for example. So the same option that you also can use for make files. Okay, here we go. Now you have a new subdirectory with the same name as the ISA file, except for the extension. And if you look into that, you see there are three executables, the Ulm debugger with a text user interface, the Ulm virtual machine that you can invoke from the command line and the Ulm assembler. Now for getting started, uh, we actually need some program that we can execute. And for generating this program in machine code, you can use a normal text editor, your favorite text editor. I will use mine here on the left. And then I simply type in the hex code uh, for this program. And this will be the Hello World program from the Ulm on paper exercise. You can use spaces to separate, for example, here two hex digits from the next one so that you see the single bytes. You can leave here a comment if you would like to comment machine code. You can use line breaks, of course, and for hex digits from A to F, you can use lower or uppercase characters. Okay, so here we go. And then you can use the command line tool Ulm to run this program. And then you see it's printing hello world. If you want to look into the virtual machine to see what is going on instruction by instruction, you can use the Ulm debugger, um, give it the executable as argument. And here we go. Then you see, uh, maybe I have to shrink the font size. You do have um, basically everything that we had in the Ulm on exercise uh, project. You see here the memory, the single memory cells, they are initialized with the program at address zero, for example. You see this byte with uh, representation hex one zero is loaded. Here we have the first instruction. You see here the content of the uh, registers, the instruction pointer, the instruction register. You also see here um, the content of the registers, register zero to register F. Actually, the Ulm virtual machine can provide more than just 16 registers. So you could scroll here to the right, but this ISA just uses uh, 16 registers. So we are good with that. And here you see the status flex. Here you will see output generated. And later when we do uh, programs that also get some input, you also can type in here something into the keyboard buffer. Now uh, here you also see something interesting, which should look familiar to you. This is similar to the output that you get from object dump. If you, uh, for example, look into the executable generated by the APC compiler, and you also see here something interesting, some assembly representation of these instructions. We will come back to that later. Now I first want to show you that you can step through the program instruction by instruction by using the uh, keyboard, for example, control and S will execute one instruction. Now you see this first instruction was loaded into the instruction register. And the effect was that register one was initialized with 
the zero extension of this uh, emitted value. You also can use here the um, pull down menu to uh, see what options we have. For example, here, this option that I currently use, control S, you also can run the program until either a breakpoint was hit or the program terminated. I will show you that uh, in a second. Let's go through a few instructions to see uh, what is happening. The second instruction was loading the first character of this string into register two. So exactly what we observed uh, in the last exercise. And now this instruction with opcode hex 3.0 will print the first character and you will see this here in output. Now let's go back to this uh, window here with the program then I can show you the meaning of breakpoints. For example, I can click here on the left and this is um, the address or um, refers to the address with this instruction which is actually printing a character. If I now use Control R or use here the pull down menu, uh, this option, the program will run until this instruction was reached. That means if I now press Control S once again, you see the next character. So if I click here, remove this breakpoint and set this breakpoint after the instruction which prints a character, I can basically um, run the program until the next character was printed. Control R now gives me each time a new character. So more convenient compared to the Ullmann paper. Uh, and if I now remove the breakpoint and hit Control R, it runs until the program terminated. With Control Q, you also find this here, you can quit the program. Before I show you how to use the Ulm assembler to have a more convenient way to generate machine code, I want to show you how to generate a reference manual because this also contains the documentation of the assembly notation. You see the option um, refman is available. So let's use that, dash dash refman. Then you also have to specify for which architecture this documentation should be generated. So here you again specify the Ulm IS40 ISA. And now this will take some time. It first generates some code and then generates with LaTeX the PDF. So here we go. And now in the subdirectory Ulm IS40, you should have the refman PDF. Let's look into it. Let's look into the description of, for example, the add queue instruction. Now, some part of that should look familiar to you. For example, how the format is described, uh, the format for this instruction with opcode hex 12. Also, how the effect is described and how the status flags are updated. And above here, you see the assembly notation that you can use to generate an instruction with this opcode. Now this add queue, the so-called mnemonic, is actually used for two instructions in this instruction set. You see here another um, occurrence of this add queue for a different instruction. Now this um, difference and uh, how to understand these notations, I want to show you by example and actually for a different instruction, an instruction for printing a single character. So here on the left, I will now generate a simple assembly program. Uh, let's use foo.s for that. The first thing you actually have to know about assembly programs is that they are organized in columns. And in the first column, you cannot specify an instruction. The first column is reserved for labels. So for showing you a few first instructions, I always have to use an indent of at least a space or a tab. And the first instruction will load a zero extended immediate value into a register. The value hex for one into register one. So you already see a few things about the syntax that this assembler is using. If a number has a prefix, the percent prefix, it's referring to a register. 
and otherwise if it doesn't have a prefix is referring to an emitted value. The next instruction, the second instruction will print a character, the character stored in register one. And the third instruction will print also a value, but here it's a bit different. The value itself will be encoded into the instruction. And when we later look into the machine code, you will see that these two instructions do have different opcodes. So from a machine code level, these are completely different instructions, but we use in both cases this put C to identify the instruction. And then I also want to show you that you don't have to write the ASCII code uh, for printing a character. Let's print the uppercase C and here I use this single quotes to specify what character I want to print. And then I also actually want to print a new line. Then you also see that you can uh, use this uh, backslash N for a new line. And then I want to hold the program with exit code 42. So that you also see I can specify this emitted values in decimal representation. Okay, but that's actually it for doing the assembly programming. Now I want to show you how to translate this into an executable. And this generated a dot out. And then you see from this assembly notation, this machine code was generated. And again, this should look familiar to you. Same uh, output format, basically like uh, object dump is using. You also see that here uh, in this comment, um, actually a decimal representation is used, even though we were using here a hexadecimal representation, but 65 is the same as hex 41. Now, the interesting thing is that here, as I said, put C with this percent one generated an instruction with an opcode hex 30. Whereas this instruction, put C with just the immediate value specified, generated a instruction with a different opcode. So technically this here and this here are completely different kind of instructions, even though you use the same put C here. We will talk later about the meaning of all these other things. The interesting thing is that only this part here is basically the program that gets executed. Now let's run this program, a dot out. It's printing out ABC. Then one last look into the ULM debugger so that you actually see this here is just the code and uh, the rest is some additional information that uh, might become useful another day. So here I have to decrease again the font size. And if you go through this with the debugger, you see only this instructions are actually loaded into memory. The rest was just some additional bookkeeping information. And then we can step through the program and it's printing ABC. And now the program terminated and also this video will terminate.